I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I hate these games. I don't want to sugarcoat anything here. I love the Pokemon games as a franchise. Pokemon Sun and Moon are my personal Dark Souls final box. Due to the fact that I'm completing every Pokemon game with only the shinies. And um, this is one of them. Uh, a Pokemon game that is only in name. I met with the cruel and miserable fate of saving the world of Hawaii from the most daring and breathtaking step outside of Japan that the Pokemon Company International has ever taken. Because the war crimes they committed here weren't enough. Pokemon Sun and Moon were born in twice. They just really fucking hate this place. Put on your seatbelts and get ready for the ride of your life through my favorite Pokemon region to play after receiving a lobotomy. Pokemon Sun and Moon start off very differently from every other Pokemon game, as when you start them, the credits just automatically roll. As if it ends just as quick as it never started. Well, except I wish, because that would have been the good ending. You see, the bad ending is just playing them. Whoa, the Pokemon Cutscene Simulator. The game, I think, uh, I haven't quite got that far yet. You see, this uh, movie takes place in the lovely region of Alola, Pokemon Hawaii. Just without the, the kamikaze pilots. You have just moved here from the Kanto region, probably to avoid being drafted in the war, only to find out your friends are headed your way. Well, you see, we're only four minutes in here. I've already spotted some of the most uh, unbelievable thing I've ever seen in the video game. That we own a Wii U. Ah, a little tradition, having your teacher greet you and your single mother at your house before even having unpacked while he is uh, completely shirtless. Oh, well, you just don't get it. It's carefree living down here. That's all. Nothing to do with him having court-ordered obligations to tell everyone who moves into his neighborhood about his past misdeeds. <laughs> having stepped into our house for a total of 12 seconds, I guess he's already uh, taken the role as the man of the house. Already ordering us around to go get our bag and hat and get ready to leave. You know what? Maybe I was wrong. Because I really do like the part in between the long dialogue dumps where I get to move around. I mean, where I go is not optional. I get to do it. You'll see 10 minutes in this story really starts storying. Being the hero of my own story and the self-appointed main character with the frontal cortex of a 10-year-old boy, we jump in to protect the small outer space creature from birds until it fucking explodes. <laughs> Were we more safe, you know, taking our chance with the small birds here? <laughs> like their bones are literally made out of tin foil. <laughs> Luckily, the guardian of the island slaps those dumb birds and saves us right before the impact. There's no fall damage in Pokemon. This is a silly goose right here. Wow, there really is a, a lot of words here. And the only important one or two is that Tapu Koko left us a crystal, which is pretty damn cool, I guess. I don't know, it's what Gramps over here told us. I mean, it's cool enough for him to offer us our very own personalized starter, because here in the Alola region, every starter comes with its very own unique three-minute cutscene, pretty much ensuring that uh, you never see this thing shiny. No, 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 seriously, it would take uh, eight and a half whole days of resets just for you to break the, the Vegas stakes on the shiny Pokemon. Meet our little owl boy. Not shiny. Already retconning the entire thumbnail. Or have we? I was gonna spend a whole eight days pressing A mindlessly. I mean, it doesn't mean we can't just genetically breed a shiny starter later in the video. Meet Hal, a very stereotypical Hawaiian surfer, our free spirit attitude rival. Going so far as to even smile when he loses, which he does uh, a lot. In fact, I'm not even sure this guy gets a win on screen. Uh, ever. We're talking so wholesome, but at the same time stereotypical, that if this were a Disney movie, there would be a 13-page apology for their actions that they took in the past. But after never acquiring the power to read, and having the power of God and anime on my side, I, I think it's time we can, uh, you know, finally play the game in between the lands of text and cinematic scenes. Only to learn that the best shiny hunting method isn't available to us until after we got a gym badge. But after a gym wouldn't be as shiny only, would it? So it's clear what we must do. We must run in the grass aimlessly until our legs no longer work good. In, he in here I thought the cutscenes were bad. Our odds for finding a shiny Pokemon doing this method, you know, maybe one shiny for every uh, 4,000 uh, non-shiny ones we encounter. And that's if we're lucky. I think the game took pity on me, probably for playing this point-and-click adventure that required me to install a Flash player. By giving us a shiny encounter well before reaching the full odds. Who would've thought I would've only had to forfeit, uh, nine hours and 45 minutes of my life for this? I mean, that sounds like a great deal, right? Well, now that we got a shiny, it looks like we can experience the rest of the game. Oh, on second thought, I could just catch the whole team now, right? I mean, I don't really got anywhere to go. 
I got everything I need right here. I don't need no cutscenes. Who cares if they're the same three Pokemon over and over again? Speaking of cutscenes, we're immediately thrown into more, which uh, at least result in another battle with Hal, where I embarrass him in front of his whole village and his grandfather by spamming the exact same move over and over again until he ran out of Pokemon to scream at. By doing so, his grandfather gives us our brand new Fisher Price Rolex with the ability to do fancy moves and not Mega Evolve. Yeah, I'm really wondering what the resale value on this thing is. After blasting us with so much text and cutscenes that I, I may have fell asleep at the wheel. Don't worry, it wasn't as bad as the last time I was under the influence behind the wheel. That family of 17 walked in front of my car, damn it! It wasn't my fault the light wasn't green yet. While we were asleep, Lily, the owner of the living cosmic creature, recruited us to Professor Shirtless's house, where he gives us a funny little ribbon to adventure around Hawaii with. Kids without the ribbon, or the supervision of adults, are shot on sight. We're immediately escorted to Pokemon Trainer School. It seems to operate at, uh, what is it, uh, 3.15 a.m. Learning never sleeps, kids. <laughs> we immediately graduate from Trainer School in just, uh, just a few minutes meaning we can travel around the islands of the Alola free of our own will, as long as it's uh, on those very specific paths. After requiring the drip of a 2007 Jonas brother and battling a criminal organization that goes by the name of Team, Team Skull, we can what? We can challenge the captain. Cap, captain of an island? Captain Lima here can be best described as well. Um, how can I say it nicely? Soft, overrated, pretty boy. A bit. Despite what he looks like, I'm not quite prepared for this battle with the Yacht Club captain. But with brute force and the reputation of doing the exact same thing over and over again without changing anything at all strategically, which is literally the definition of autism, we give up and head to the fields of the beachside Hawaii, where I learn of this island's rat infestation. You know, except that these rats seem a little, seem a little different. First of all, they only come out at night and are, well, slightly more French. I think Shadow says it best. Disgusting black creatures. Get out of my sight. Why'd Shadow go and say that, huh? Hmm? Why say that? Ah, go ahead. Say 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 why? <laughs> no, I insist. Oh wait, he's what? Wrong! Clearly he just wanted a red one! Can't believe you thought that. Shadow is a shiny hunter, not a racist. After about, well, um, nine seconds of things later, we eventually find ourselves somewhere important for once. This island's trial. The only action stopping us from acquiring the ability to partake in the real shiny hunting method. These games are actually good for, quotations, um, good. By clearing the strange mongoose holes and defeating their leader, Big Donald, we acquire our first gym badge. Except it's not a gym badge, because it clearly wasn't a gym. It was f***ing propaganda. But to be fair, it's just an over-glorified dance move that makes your Pokemon go boom. So of course, we gotta go in the tall grass to find our new team member. With our new ability of uh, torturing Pokemon until they call for help, we can farm their cries for safety into a chain of events that increase our shiny odds so high, it's almost as if playing the game is worth it. Almost. Not quite. This mechanic is called SOS Battles, where certain Pokemon can call for help once their HP is low enough for other Pokemon to come help them. Usually it's the, the same Pokemon or their evolutionary family, and sometimes, well, um, other pink children, I guess? This style of battle requires you to carefully manage your Pokemon's PP, your enemy's HP, and later use items to enrage the wild Pokemon to call for help more frequently. Also, you have to manage the wild Pokemon's PP, too, so, uh, they don't fucking kill themselves. Also by PP, I am referring to power points, guys. Uh, let me be clear here, as we're literally battling children. After screaming for help and receiving in the aid of adults or other strange children, our shiny odds are now 1 in 350, over 13 times higher than just running in the grass. You see, torture isn't necessary, but it is optimal. We eventually get our shiny Pichu after only 14 call-ins. Well, on this specific chain as well. Uh, I may have failed a few times. Meaning our odds were only 1 in 500. This game, uh, this game really taking pity on me, huh? After acquiring it and naming it after my favorite cereal mascot, we obliterate our rival Hal by continuously <laughs> screaming at his pets. And this absolute legend doesn't even break a sweat, only smiling through the pain. But behind all that, he must have not taken it too lightly, as he sent his grandfather to beat our ass, as he is the island's actual big kahuna. Literally in size and name. Luckily, my man specializes in fighting types, so this should be, uh, this should be a, uh, uh, 
God damn, my brother in Christ, let me breathe! Using the power of Go-Go Power Rangers, his Floyd Crab Weather really gives us the work. So I changed my strategy, slightly, and we beat Hao's grandfather after only being a Pokemon trainer for one day. Well, in-game time. Not real life. We're not that lucky. <laughs> and by defeating him, we acquire his fighting crystal and our very own Mecha, known as Tauros. My favorite bike in the Pokemon franchise. This one has to be the safest one to operate. Well, that, I mean, for us. Now it's time for our three main characters and uh, a questionable adult. Hop aboard a small sailboat in order to travel to the next location, Jeffrey's Island. I mean, uh, <coughs> sorry, Akla Island. Here we are greeted by something even more rare than shiny Pokemon. Women. I guess we made it to the right island after all. After purchasing some new drip, we really find out this game's true difficulty curve. And by that, I mean this game is as difficult as surviving a fall off a couch. Well, it's a very slight inconvenience of difficulty, unless you are this game's target demographic, in which you are a newborn child and falling off a couch is... fatal. What's that? You don't believe me? Well, you see, um, I actually just lost the last two major battles, and they praised me about how strong I am. I don't know what you're saying, it seems more accurate to me. We also acquire our second mecha, Stoutlin, who I never take out of his prison ever again. He's just a, a glorified item finder, who cares a f this is part of the game where we make it to the milk farm, where they keep all of the gotcha characters and cows. Also where we can perform peak gameplay. <laughs> Looks like it's time to make a shiny owl boy. Or girl. But statistically, I mean, probably not. You see, with the power of trading, myself, I can breed our starter, who may have failed in life, branded a non-shiny citizen from birth. But that does not mean he can't breed an offspring to be everything he was unable to be, and vicariously live through them. The only problem is, the odds of that happening are close to one in a million. Yeah, close to. I can't read. Traveling to the lovely land of French Canada, luckily not for real, we can trade ourselves a French owl girl. I mean, the odds are still not good, but with this gameplay, how could I not? And also, yes, uh, the, the power of God in anime is, is still on my side. He hasn't, hasn't left me yet. Don't worry, my illness only affects me mentally. Normally, I would catch a flame body Pokemon to make this process a lot easier, but I didn't because, well, I hate myself. Subscribe, and maybe one day I can feel the happiness that left my body long before I became a shiny degenerate. Oh man, these owl failures are just so lucky. They get to be born in on my favorite Sonic 3 level. But come on, you don't recognize it? It's clearly the one where you collect the blue balls until they all bust in the air. Oh, why would you look at all these baby owls? You know, it would be a shame if someone came in here and only chose the shiny one and left the rest in the PC. Shadow and Maria's child is here with his type null. A Pokemon? Maybe? Who seems to be a high-functional Team Skull member. Not because he beat Hal. You don't need to be high-functional for that. This seems like a great time to use our newly fully evolved mascots to take on the Water Trial. With our new addition, Leonardo the Flappy Bird. Who is that? Clearly not as useful as I initially expected. Probably why it took him so long to get a Grammy after, uh, one try. We beat the trials of the water by taking down a school of fish in a much more humane way than the average day in an American high school and immediately get dropped back into only a spoonful of some more uh, cinematic cutscenes. Hey guys, welcome back to Pokemon Cutscene Simulator, where we'll be joining a four-way wrestling match with a totally not full-grown man in a mask and three children. Bro really thought he could hide his identity from the courts. <laughs> Mask. You know, I, I think they have you memorized from your chest hair at this point from the amount of times you spent on screen. We then visit an active volcano where God told me to jump in. So I pushed his ass in instead, explaining why there is no God in this world. Only Minecraft Let's Players and YouTube Energy Drink ad reads. I mean, Spike Trial is actually pretty good. I like the part where you play Spot the Difference. It gets increasingly harder to not jump in the volcano. <laughs> I mean, this battle was also very, uh, you know, it was very, um, uh, fair and balanced. Though it is mostly my own fault for, for using underlevel shiny pretty boys. But eventually we are able to beat the Salazzle Dazzle Vajazzle Trial, making me think, uh, maybe it's time to get some more coverage. Like, like now. And what better place to do that than the river? The river. Drown it. But hold on, we can't head to the river yet. You know what, I was just sitting here. I was enjoying Pikachu's tan. But you know what, it's not looking quite, uh, you know, quite enough. Yeah, you know, it's not looking quite, uh, 
quite enough, um, how do I say this, uh, culturally appropriate. So with the power of a stone, Pikachu is looking much better. And also has psychic powers and surfs now. You can say she's a, she's a culture vulture. Back to the river where we find a very promising fish that we uh, kill three times by accident before we even start the chain. That means I had three chances to change my mind and didn't. And now that we have adrenaline orbs, it's much easier for it to call for help. Usually, sometimes, I think. Eventually, he calls for a solid gold friend that we fish faster than Big the Cat. Yeah, that's right. I caught a water Pokemon. Just, uh, just realizing now that my water Pokemon may have forgot it was a water type. Also, the only cereal mascot that I could find that was a fish was a cereal called Crispy Sea Vanilla. And, well, I can't speak French, so I, I never got the mascot's name. Le fish au chocolat. So I just went with uh, what was clearly on the box here is a uh, which I guess means to offer you. Offer me what? Pain? Suffering? Next trial is collecting ingredients for the gacha character so that she can make us food. But this giant praying mantis thinks that our brain is food. I can't even read. This isn't a good brain. So instead, Toucan and Sam, our new buddy old pal, just one boops it on the nose. Cause there's no such thing as insect rights. You can just swat them motherfuckers anyway. Just in time to fight the girl boss of this island. Well, maybe this game isn't so bad, is it? Hmm? <laughs> Never mind, she's a pit bull. Lycanroc, the pit bull of the Pokemon world. Known for consuming children. Luckily, I am able to quench its thirst for blood by showing it to the closest orphanage. I wouldn't be sad, don't worry, they're, they weren't shiny anyways, okay? Oh well, they're, they're, they're gone. Inspired by her dance moves and feeling like a true white woman on vacation, I decided to get braids to celebrate our victory over an entire island. Except it just made me look like, uh, Carl Gallagher, and now I can't unsee it. Every f***ing cutscene, that's just me now. The power of Hollywood takes us all the way to the zoo, where we met the bad guy. And the jellyfish top hat from another dimension. His OST just goes so hard for no reason. It's just too bad that this OST is wasted on this McDonald family restaurant inside of a Walmart, inside of a shopping mall. After defeating it, we are quickly kicked out and head to the next island, Yula Yula Island, where Hal wants to catch these hands again. But these hands are rated E for any time, and he's looking like just enough XP to level up. See, I, I, I thought my braids were pushing the cultural norms here. And Professor Oak's looking like a leather bag. And more, and more, and more, and more cutscenes. This game is so badly paced, I had to boot up another game to cleanse my gamer stimulants. And that other game was... Euthanasia. It's time for us to hit the Haunted Supermarket. Haunted... Super... Market, what? I mean, hey, I don't make the games right, I just play them. I'm a sucker for Halloween, so this part is pretty cool. As much as it hurts to admit it, but we're talking about, you know, 0.5% of the game here, so... I mean, it can't all be misses when you sell 16 million copies and then make the same game again and sell it another 9 million times. Wow, I can't believe it. They actually made a sequel to Schizophrenia. It perfectly encapsulates monsters all the voices in my head, telling me to fucking end it all. In Minecraft, of course. In this trial, we are taking pictures of ghosts that haunt this local Walmart. It's the super fan. So obsessed with Pikachu, it became it. Seriously, it's right there. It's Pikachu. Can't tell? Ah yes, my favorite Pokemon ability, Disguise. Not only can you hide your true emotions behind a faceless corporation, a billion dollar franchise's rat, but he also, well, dies. You know what? I like this Disguise guy. Kinda reminds me of myself. Wouldn't mind chaining me a few of these. Again? Yeah, that's right, I already did this a few Halloweens back. You see this time? I wanna use it. It's too bad encountering them is complete dog shit. Ah, and when you do encounter one, good luck, because this is number one of, well, 200, because these chains are unlike no other. Gone are the days of one-shotting your called-in friends, thanks to disguise. And do they ever hit back, Jimmy? Yeah, not having a multi-hit Pokemon, like last time, it's really making this hard to pull off. I failed and failed again, and again. Thanks being able to reset the game, I was able to save all of my resources. Although now I have no idea how long this took, but uh, not sure I even want to know. Beat the newest and misspelled shiny Pokemon on our team. The shiny hunt turned my brain into mashed potatoes. But you know what they say it must be true. God must give his strongest soldiers his hardest battles. Children video game at 5 a.m. Some of that game freak must really thought they cooked when they made Cat Ghost Girl. You know, the one wearing the tablecloth scraps. Because she decided to be part of the story for the next three hours. But honestly, is there even any story? 
If you just look at the bottom of the map, you can just see where to go. You just go where the map tells you. I feel like I'm Dora. After walking through some very poorly hid hallways filled with trainer encounters and little to no substance, we make it to the real hallways filled with Splatoon fans' worst nightmares, mixing the colors. We finally make it to the quiz. That do really be my favorite video game feature, collecting a password from engaging otherwise useless NPCs. I like it so much, I just fucking googled that shit, my boy, and lo and behold, we're in. Just uh, one second, I can't go ahead until I've uh, spread a little misinformation. Yeah, that's my rule. You, you take a little bit of real information, you spread some misinformation, you know, so I made sure to change the whole Wikipedia page myself. Just uh, make sure not to tell Twitter. After the ever so hype password gameplay, we finally battled the legendary Guzma Balls. Who, well, sort of, well, sort of bugs me just a little. You know, just just a, just a little bit. You could say I wish I uh, I wish I could have fleed. Oh no! This region is based off America. As an American cop, as the true final boss that we must all face in life one day, that only uses dark types and has a has a Garfield. But luckily, it's a Monday, and I'm all out of lasagna. Oh well, time to steal a boat and head back to the International Space Station. That, oh my god, would you believe it? It was a bad guy base the whole time. Who, who would have thought? Who would have thought that? A good thing we took the Batmobile. You know, it's time to enforce my no-kill policy. As in, no, I'll kill myself first, thank you. Oh, no. It's more cutscenes, followed by walls and walls of text. So many cutscenes, I seem to have uh, somehow ended up in a, ended up in another world. Oh wait, false alarm! It's just another game. It being actually good gave it away. You know, frame one. Just gotta hack and slash and splish and splash with my boy Crash. My favorite part is when we save the world by playing the piano, and all the women die. Oh crap! We're back. So as you may have noticed, we only have five shiny Pokemon currently, and the game's getting well. Well, it's getting up there. It's getting uh, it's getting a little closer to the end. And, well, that's if the game decides it it wants to end. Half of the trials, if you even want to call them that, they just hand you the crystal at this point, or you just find them by accident. <laughs> it's almost as good as my favorite breeding simulator gameplay. Welcome back, gamers, one and all, to the final trial. And the final trial is resisting the urge to complain about this game on Twitter, or even worse, Reddit. The trial is uh, well, uh, um, well, this trial is uh, oh, pretty hard. I like the part where I do the funny fairy move and I just imagine the dragons melting away as if they're fucking radioactive. Who knew that playing rough would be so deadly? That's, that's why I never, yeah, and I never had friends. Only thing left is to walk up the staircase to heaven? Or well, I, I guess the stars because these really aren't that long. Wait, stars further than heaven? Isn't heaven just a place on earth? Oh my god! Has heaven been Ohio this whole time? We're f Once making it to the top, we share a little solo with Lily, whose cosmic threat of a star evolved from our sick jams. Yeah, our sick music. We're like Lincoln Chic. And bring us to, uh, Maltra, Maltra Space? Hmm. So that's, that's different than re the real space? Is all Ultra Space? Is there, like a, is there like a lot of space in between things here? Like Ultra amount? Because I could have sworn these were the back alleys of London in 1919. If you couldn't tell by the residents' hats. Also, the residents being, uh, you know, a little evil. They took over Lily's mom. And she must be bad. Her hair's black now. Only bad guys do that. F this fight is, uh, well, this fight is, well, um, the most bullsh**. Oh, uh, yeah, just the, just the most bullsh** that's ever been sh**. Her first goddamn Pokemon took five and a half of mine just to barely take out. Luckily, it's, uh... Heavily overcompensating for the rest of her team, and we take out with relative ease, despite them having the power of Goku. Luckily, Lily breaks free from her mommy issues and tries to separate her skull from the rest of her body by using Big Cat, who just uh, kills mommy's hat Pokemon instead. Let's not forget it's from a, a different fucking dimension. <laughs> Hopefully, the dimension where this was actually a good game. After solving the adoptive arc, fixing more families than baby bonus checks, and Vin Diesel decided, you know what? Before we hit 100 hours, I think we should do what this game really deserves. And that's um, only beating with five Pokemon. This game doesn't deserve fucking sh**. Welcome everybody to the tall snowy mountain, which contains the first ever... Um, are you serious? Just, just one second here. You, I gotta clean up the trash. Okay, where was I? The first ever Alolan Elite Four, constructed exactly six hours ago. <laughs> I haven't even got the giant scissor ceremony yet. 
meaning this Elite Four has no champion. And it's up to me to become the very first, because if you aren't first, you're last. I might only have five of the most OP shiny Pokemon, but I wouldn't be caught dead losing to a cat girl. So buckle up your seats and get ready. We're going to the drive to the dog park. And well, we're going a little off-roading. Fruit Loops heating up that beak has saved me more times than Spider-Man at a skyscraper climbing contest. Not to mention it even hits harder than him too. Was that disadvantaged? Not disadvantaged, this beak does not discriminate. First the burn, and then the boop. My favorite is when I defeated her pile of sand. Next up is Pitbull of Hawaii. Okay, well it isn't yet. It's it's fish. It's a fish that's a rock. One blade of grass later, and it's back to the main event. And the Pitbull's eyes glow red with the intent to feast on our bones. After snapping Blueberry's neck twice, and dropping a tectonic plate on my giant fish, leaving it up to Toucan Sam to, well, you know, punch it in the face, of course. But not even that was enough for the power of the Pitbull's counter. And the last plan was simple. Power of money. But I guess I wasn't the only one who had this plan. <laughs> now four Pokemon are dead for literally nothing. All undone. Luckily, I can now use one blade of grass to cut down her number of usable Poké Monster. Until she brings out the funny potato head man that constantly humble checks my team of how good it can take a hit. And um, how I clearly don't know how to take a hint and just stop playing this f***ing game. Last but not least, the flying type golfer lady who brought a club, or else, you know, her outfit would have just looked funny. Despite not knowing one single good electric move, Thundershock would somehow be enough to take out Skarmory, but only because it chose to only set up spikes instead of violence. You know, a true pacifist run here. The rest of the team isn't anything too crazy. Oh my god, is that a toucan? I've never seen one so... so broke. It doesn't even have a shine in its entrance. Where is your Fruit Loops colored beak, my boy? Who knew that economic status does not affect your ability to fight? <laughs> In fact, probably enhances it. With the power of the Dragon Balls, Raichu is more than enough to solve our Tiger Woods problem and claim our rightful place on the throne as Elden Lore. For about two minutes before our first ever challenger appears, and it's none other than the very first person that we ever met in this goddamn hell of a rock, the Nutty Professor. And he's not hold back any longer, despite his court mandates. His AI is through the roof, calling out some of my type effective moves and bringing out the chungest of chungsters to brawl. Not even mention this guy has a pit bull of his own. Mr. 305 himself owns a pit bull. Goddamn dogception. He even bring Tony the Tiger to just laugh and dunk on all of our Pokemon one at a time. For thankfully for every Pokemon of his that is hard to knock out, he's uh, just got two easy ones sitting in the back that you can simply boop the cat. I can't just won't stop. But neither will I. I will defeat you and defend my title as an Elden Lord. It's over, Professor. I've won. And my first law as president? Everyone must wear shirts at all times. No, 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 no. This is, this can't be happening. Where are the credits? Why is there still cutscenes? I've already become the best like no one ever was. This isn't fair. I thought I made the rules. What? Not only cutscenes, but I still got to play. I guess we're doing a little payback for saving our lives. And this battle was, well, this battle was, wait, that's it? Really? That just worked? I'm not even kidding here. I, I caught him first throw. I couldn't have even scripted this if I tried. Wow, legendary battles have came a long way from when I was a kid. Well, cutscenes can keep coming all they want. I'm, I'm done here. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this painful adventure. Help soothe the voices in my head, even if it was for a few moments. Subscribe for some more normal, shiny only Pokemon series videos, as I've been R9, and I hope you had yourselves a damn good time.